Well, g'day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Mad Dragons vodcast. The Dragons are back in the winner's circle. Uh, I, I think, you know, that there's a lot of people that aren't too happy with the win, but at the end of the day, we beat a team by 20 points. We won, and we won comfortably in a game where we had to win. Uh, that said, we will start with uh, a little bit of the, the bad. For those that didn't see the game... Why was the first half when we led six points to nil so disappointing, Benny? Uh, g'day, Ronnie. How are you, boys? Um, yeah, good to be coming off a win again. Um, I think uh, first half, I don't know. We just, uh, we, were, we were grinding, but um, I don't know. Just things weren't really clicking, I, I guess, on from what I could sort of see. Um, the forwards were muscling up well enough, um, but I think the Bulldogs sort of, gave it a bit to us in that sort of first half as well. So, um, you know, it was sort of, for me, it was a bit like a boxing match. And I think we we're just sort of feeling each other out. And then um, obviously once the points started coming, they started coming in the second half. But um, yeah, I think the boys were a little bit sort of uh, wary and cautious, um, you know, coming off the Tigers loss, um, you know, a pretty big expectation for us to get, get it over the doggies, which we obviously did. But um, yeah, I, I, it was a pretty lackluster first half for me. Uh, but uh, it could have been worse. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. For, for me, I was I thought it was our worst half of the year. I thought we dropped far too much ball, and if we had been playing a team like, let's say, Melbourne, I think we could have found ourselves down 40 points to nil at halftime. Like, we, we just gave the dogs too many opportunities. Do you think that's a fair assessment, Youngie? <laughs> um, yeah, I agree with Benny. Um, you just... You can't give a team that much ball and expect to win a game. I, I think we we're very, very lucky to, to get away early. They did a lot of things wrong. And um, they could have got on top of us in that first half and, and sort of ran away with it. But things just seemed to roll our way in the second and we got the win. So I think we we're a little bit lucky at times. All right, I'll bring in... Uh... I'll bring in Mick Foster for this one. So we led 6-0 at half time. There must have been some positives in the first half, Mick. Yeah, good day, boys. Good day, Donny. Um, yeah, mate, I was at the game. Um, Hinged the jersey, brought it, brought it to the game, even though I don't like it. I thought that uh, you know showed a bit of loyalty <laughs> to the team. <laughs> no, it's not that I don't like it, but it's not, I like the red bee. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, look, I agree with you, boys. The drop ball uh, was really bad. A lot of drop footy in the first half. Mind you, the Bulldogs were just as bad as us. They were dropping the ball um, pretty much just as much as we were. Um, and I think the defence of the Bulldogs was actually pretty good because um, only six 0 against a team that's coming last. Uh, and what you said earlier, if we were playing Melbourne or Penrith, I reckon that could have been forty nil at half time. Uh, the second half, um, I, had to, I watched the game again today. I thought, well, thirty two points to twelve. The thing that can that can send me about that game, even though we won and we scored uh, thirty two points, we didn't make breaks. We scored closer to close to the line. We actually didn't make those 35, 40 metre drag and tries that we're used to making with Dufty making breaks and things like that. There was really no breaks. So that sort of concerned me a little bit. We uh, normally made breaks and we just we just weren't making them. I, I, I don't know about that. I, I, I thought Dufty made well, half breaks know. every single time he touched the ball. I, I, you know, he, he, I don't reckon he had at least three or four uh, line breaks during the course of the game, Dufty. And, you know, there, there was a, a few others as well. Um, you know, Maybe I, I expected the 75 metre ones. <laughs> <laughs> if he only runs 30, I'd think, well, that's not Duffy. <laughs> no, I don't know. I just, I, I, I guess that's a good point, though. I was expecting bigger. Yeah, he did make breaks, but not the classic, you know, sidestep and 80 metre ones sort of things. I guess that's what I'm saying. Those breaks weren't in the game. Yeah, for me, Duffy was the big positive in the first half. I thought he, every time he touched the ball, he looked like, looked like creating something, looked like, uh, he was going to be be dangerous, and I thought he was was pretty dangerous throughout this contest. But uh, that was that was probably the big positive for me. Um, so the, probably the, the the last of the, the the negative ones. Obviously, we don't want to focus too much on the negative when we have a win. But uh, I'll bring in uh, Matt Hasler. Uh, any individuals that you think uh, are out of chances after their performance in this game? Um, well, Corey Norman's the first uh, first name that springs to mind. Um, I think uh, he's he's probably on his uh, he's got to be on his last chance if 
he fucks he fucks serious. I reckon he's he's got to have a look at him. Say right, time to step aside, and he brings over brings in one of the uh, one of the young guys because we've got a lot of young halves coming through. Um, we just got to just got to give him a chance. And to be honest, I don't think Norman's really done that much since he's been with us. He's kicked a few field goals. Um, he's had a few standout moments, but uh, by and large, he's uh, his attack's been very, very predictable, and uh, his defence has been a little bit suspect at times. So I think if they're going to get rid of someone, he's got to be the first to go. All right, I'll, I'll just bring in a bloke that I, I know is a bit of a, a Corey Norman fan. Youngie, how, how did, I, I actually thought Norman's performance in this particular game wasn't too bad. Would, would you agree with, uh, with Matt there? Certainly wasn't as bad as last week. The thing, the thing that I like about Norman is his kicking game. Um, and he's a runner of the football as well. So I thought he got, I thought he kept them on edge a little bit. Um, I, I don't, I certainly don't think he had a bad game. I don't, I don't know that he's played as badly as he has uh, the last couple of weeks. Put that way. Just just a quick look at his stats. He, he had 18 runs for 170 metres. I, I thought he was a, was a constant threat with the, the ball in hand and and asked a, asked a few questions. He certainly didn't perhaps have the the try assists and all that sort of stuff that you you'd expect from from a half. But I thought as a as a running option as a as a threat with ball in hand, I thought it was uh, was one of his better games. One hundred and seventy meters is not bad. <laughs> that's, that's not a, not a bad day at the office for a half. But uh, a lot of running for a half. We did have quite a few blokes getting up there with the meters, and I think that says a lot about the opposition. What do you reckon, Benny? Yeah, I think um, I'm not going to comment on Norman because I'm not a huge Norman fan, but um, I'm sort of in agreement with Matt. You don't say. Uh, although, <laughs> although he wouldn't have been my pick for, for the Deadwood that sort of needs to be shifted. But, um, yeah, I guess uh, he's lacklustre for me. For the money he's on and the expectations that he brings, he just doesn't deliver. But um, yeah, you know, it's it was one of those games, but it's it's it just the flow wasn't there a lot of the time. Um, like um, Mick said, the, the tries that we did score, they were you know 15, 20 out, and we sort of went over, and there was no real sort of running play. So um, yeah, and the Bulldogs led us towards the, the sort of second half play the game that we sort of wanted to play. Obviously, they were getting tired and, and dropping off and, you know, they're not a, a 60 or, a, you know, 80-minute football side. So, um, we were let do a bit more than what we'd normally would have. But like you said, if that was the Storm or Penrith, it would have been a totally different game. Um, you know, and, and that's what we've got to worry about when we come up against teams, against teams like that. If Norman plays like he did against the Bulldogs, we're going to get pumped. You know what I mean? There's, there's a few guys on the field um, that if they play like they played the last few weeks, we're just going to get absolutely hammered. So, um, but yeah, it is what it is, I guess. All right, Mick. I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you my name, Josh Kerr. I, I've been a big supporter of Josh Kerr. I, I think, you know, he's got the potential to actually be a really good edge forward that would be damaging running at little of blokes, but he seems to keep making mistakes and. He's not running over the top of the little man at the moment. The little man's making the tackle on him every time one on one, and they're handling him easy. He's he he seems to be a bit of a bit of a powder puff. He's uh, not living up to his potential, in my opinion. Uh, what are your thoughts on Josh Kerr, Mick? Yeah, uh, good question, mate. Uh, just quickly, I'll just quickly touch on Norman. I think you guys know I actually love Norman. I don't know why, I just do. Um, so I don't agree, obviously, uh, with the other boys saying that um, Norman's got to go. I think he had actually played a, you know, it wasn't an outstanding game, but he played a good, solid game, Norman, I thought. He's pretty good in defence. His kicking was good. Um, he did, he wasn't making too many mistakes. So I actually think Norman actually had a solid game. Um, that's just my opinion on Corey anyway. And uh, But like uh, Benny said, if uh, he plays like that against Melbourne, but it won't just be him. We, we, I think we're going to get pretty much annihilated anyway because we just don't have the squad. Um, Josh Kerr, oh, I totally agree with you, mate. I'm a big fan of Kerr as well. And I think he sort of reminds me a bit of the, the Ben Cray, sort of, uh, you know, if he's on the edge, he can be that dangerous bloke sort of on the edge there, but he doesn't seem to be doing it. And and I don't know why, because he's he's got the frame for it and he's got a bit of power in the legs and that, but he just doesn't seem to be uh, to be doing it. And 
I don't really know what the problem is there. I'd like to see him run a little bit wider. Yeah, he does seem. Yeah, but that's kind of what I was, that's, kind of, that's kind of what I was sort of saying. Yeah, get him get him further out, you know. But yeah. like like a yeah, dinosaur, he should be running into the little up. blokes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, before we get into the the second half, uh, just some some general dragon stuff now. For me, the Dragons have been pretty piss poor off the field in recent years. Uh, but I thought the way that they celebrated the 100-year anniversary of the St George District Rugby League Club uh, was, was pretty bloody good. I thought it was outstanding. Uh, Jason Nightingale, Ben Hornby and Ben, ben Cray all honoured uh, on the, the walk, of, walk of Fame. Uh, Matty, I'll throw, throw to you. Talk us through some of your memories of, of uh, those three players. Yeah. Um, so, Nighting, let's start with uh, Nightingale, the great man. Um, I specifically remember his his tries in the 2010 Grand Final. Beautiful tries, Typ typical ninety tries. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, something, something only only wingers of a certain a certain echelon can pull that sort of thing off. Um, Benny Cray, um, uh, remember him. Uh, remember him playing on the on the wing back in his uh, back in his early days, um, which uh, seems kind of funny when you when you think about it. But he, he turned into a really really solid back rower. Um, love watching him play. Um, and Hornby, well. Look, you, you never knew what he was going to do. Love watching him play, uh, both as a as a five eight, sorry halfback, and as a and as a fullback when he did play there. Um, look, just a, a brilliant player, vision coming out his ears, and just an absolute joy to watch. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally concur with everything you've said there, Matty. You know, for, for me, Jason Nightingale. Um, I thought he was unlucky not to get to Clive Churchill in that grand final. He was outstanding in that game. And uh, yeah, I, I, I certainly had him as my best on ground at the, at the end, uh, not taking anything away from, from Darius Boyd. He had a, had a wonderful season for us in 2010 and was certainly uh, pretty good in the grand final as well. But 90 for me was the, the best on ground uh, that day. And, uh, and I thought he deserved that honor. Uh, Ben Hornby, I mean, he, he was the captain. He was the captain that, that broke the drought for the Dragons and he deserves to go down as a, as a Dragons legend, an absolute competitor. Uh, he wasn't a natural halfback, uh, but he was such a competitor that he was able to get in there and get the job done week in, week out, over, over, over a le lengthy period of time. He was uh, so good for us. And, and Ben Cray... Uh, I thought he was a great leader for us uh, during difficult times. I know there's a, a lot of people that, that disagree with that, but I thought at, at club level, Ben Cray was always outstanding. Uh, he was fantastic for the Dragons. That's why he kept getting picked at rep level. I don't think we ever saw the best of him at rep level, but when he put on the red V, that's when he played his best footy. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think three outstanding uh, players to add to the walk of fame. Um, Mixed reactions to the kit we were wearing on game day. Uh, I'll, I'll come to you since you're wearing the jersey, Mick. What were, what were your thoughts on the, the kit on the day? Yeah, well, I thought, um, you know, it was just a great thing to go back and, um, you know, it's, it's not obviously a, a real replica lookalike because they've sort of blended a bit of the modern with the with the actual real, real jersey. But I think it was just good that uh, they were showing a, respect to the tradition of the St. George uh, District as a club. And um, I actually think it's a bit of a shame in some ways that we're not playing in it, in it all year because I can't stand people saying, oh, Dragons, you got one premiership. If you want to fight with me, that's a good one um, because I can't stand that. Um, and I really believe, I think we sort of mentioned it before, that people trying to get rid of our history. Uh, you know, and sure, the St. George Illawarra Dragons, they've got one premiership, but the Dragons, well, they don't have one. And the fact that we were wearing this jersey and everybody who probably saw that game on telly um, or whatever, it's reminding people, St. George is not a, a brand new team. We've been there for a, a hundred years. That's a long time. And, and we deserve to have that respect 
of a club that's been there for 100 years, want to live in premierships in a row. No one's ever going to do it ever again. And uh, that's why I bought the jersey because it was, to me, the, the, the one-off jersey. They won't do it again, except in 200 years, probably dead. Um, <laughs> so I won't be able to buy the next one, which will be probably identical. Um, but yeah, just mainly for me the, to have that feel of the history with the boys that were out there representing 100 years for St. George, and I just thought it was tremendous. But yeah. I just wish we were doing it not for one game. One, one game, we're kind of going to forget it next week. And I think, nah, Dragons could have really rubbed it into everybody, you know, for the whole season. That's what I would have done. So, Nick, you, you wouldn't want to see the, that jersey as a, uh, an alternative to the, uh, the red jersey as an away, an away strip? Absolutely. I think that would be a tremendous, tremendous idea, mate, if the club was to go down that road. Because, as I said, it's the, it's the reminder to the rest of the rugby league community that we've been there for a very long time. And uh, the merger with Illawarra, um, as much as I love, I've always loved Illawarra because we've got a lot of great players from there. Uh, they're red and white, so it was an obvious choice of a merger. But I think St. George, we lost a lot of our history as soon as they joined us. And it's just um, something that I think our club should really try to, you know, keep, keep there. This jersey reminds people, oh, St. George, you haven't been around since 1999. No, mate, we've been there way before your club ever got there. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, but anyway, but if, if we could just quickly, uh, if we could have a couple of minutes just to talk about uh, the first question uh, that you put about um, the you know chasing ninety goal Ben Hornby and Ben Cray, great players, absolutely great players. I loved all of those guys, and uh, you know ninety goal. Everyone's uh, saying how awkward he is and how you know he looks bloody funny the way he runs and all that. But the thing is, that guy, despite all that, he became one of the best dragon players <laughs> ever, and. Um, you know, just a trip, absolutely loved by the club. And it's really great to see that. Ben Hornby, I love that bloke. Uh, like you said, Donnie, not obviously a standout halfback, but the, the player and what a captain, mate. What a captain when we won that Anzac Day game. You know, I can't even remember what year it was, but uh, Wayman got the ball to Ben Cray. What year was that? What year was that? I was there Cray for that one. The try. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That We were yeah. losing that game. We were down by 80 <laughs> points. With what was, I don't know. I don't know what was it? Twelve minutes ago, or something, something really ridiculous. And they just scored. And Ben Hornby was behind the post, and he said to the boys, "We can still win from here." I was watching that game, thinking, "There's no way we could win from there," and we won the game. And to me, yeah. that's a captain. And I've always believed that Ben Hornby has been one of the most underrated guys to ever play, uh, not just for the Dragons, to ever play rugby league. Uh, that bomb he took in the grand final, he even knocked Darius Boyd, nearly knocked him unconscious when he took the ball. But that take of the grand final, when I saw that, I thought, that's a cap. Not that he didn't trust Boyd to take it. Hornby knew, that's my ball. I'm going to take it because we can't afford to give away a try. Uh, that leaves with Ben, ben Cray. Um, funny enough, on a lot of Dragon sites, Ben Cray cops a lot of, critis cops a lot of criticism, which is really surprising for me because uh, I think Ben Cray has been a great player for the Dragons. Uh, very good role model, like Ben Hornby, like Nonegale. None of those guys have ever been in the paper for doing the wrong thing. Um, you know, and as Dragon fans, I think that's why we love those guys. Just just tremendous, you know. And it was great to be there and see that walk, you know, that they all deserved and I was there to see it. So I'm pretty happy about that. Yeah, mate, Ben Cray. Ben, ben Cray is honestly one of my favourite Dragons of all time. He is a bloke that epitomised the club. He bled red and white. Um I remember he was injured towards the back end of his career and the club offered to give him a, a farewell game off the bench and he he flat out refused. He said, I'll, I'll, I'll go around in, in my suit, but I'm not taking a spot off a, off a player that deserves it more. He was a club man right to the, right to the end. Um, yeah, and anyone that loves the Dragons is all right by me. Um, Benny, so just going back to the, the kit, I suppose most of the controversy, not around the jersey, but the fact that we wear wore black shorts and black socks. Uh, what, what are your, your thoughts on the, the, the full kit worn on the day? Um, I didn't mind it, actually. But um, a lot of people, uh, I guess it's, it's all right for us and, and you know, a, a good percentage of the fans, you know, we sort of know what they were running around in, you know, you know 60, 70, 80 years ago or whatever. And... Um, a lot of people knew, especially on your Facebook and that sort of stuff, they're sort of fly-by-night of Dragons fans. So they're just used to the white shorts and the red and white socks, you know. So 
Um, but I actually didn't mind it. Um, it was sort of refreshing for me. I, I didn't know they were going to do it. I knew they were going with the sort of um, the blood and bandage um, jersey. But uh, yeah, the socks and the, and the shorts, I didn't mind it actually. Um, caught me off guard a little bit, I must admit, when I first seen it. But yeah, it, I, I think it looked good. Yeah, mate. I, I, for, for me, I was over the moon with it. I, 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 it was, it's so good to see the club not do something half-assed. Like, they fully went in a replica version of what we wore in 1921 as a tribute to the club's 100 years. It was a full tribute to the, the club's history, as, as Mick was talking about. Um, and, you know, the, the players all decked out in that kit. I, I don't think I'd like to see that every second week. Certainly, I, I don't mind the idea of uh, the jersey being the ultimate jersey, but I thought for a one-off game, uh, as a as a genuine tribute to, to wearing what the players wore, or as close to the modern version, as Mick would say, uh, for that, that one game, I thought it was uh, was outstanding to see that uh, it wasn't just a jersey, it was the, the full, the full get-up uh, was a, a, a nod to the, the blokes that started it all way back in 1921. So, yeah, fantastic to see. All right, so the, the last one before we, we start talking about the second half, and uh, it's a controversial one, Jack DeBellin. Uh, today has been found not guilty of one charge, uh, but the jury unable to come to a decision on the other five charges, resulting in another hung jury. Um, Youngy. What does this mean for, for Jack? And what does it mean for the Dragons? Well, it's going to come down to the prosecution, whether they want to proceed with it on, on May 28th. You know, that they need to evaluate. We've had two juries now that have not been able to find any ev enough evidence to convict both of them. What, what point is a third jury going to prove by going back to court again? Yeah, you know, at which point do they throw this out and say, look, we can't prove this? Yeah, and, and, and that's, I, I, that... I personally don't think there's enough evidence to convict him anyway. And, and I don't think the jury actually believed beyond reasonable doubt that they had actually raped her. Yeah, I, I suppose that's that's the uh, that's the concerning thing is that there are some on the jury that are a hundred percent convinced based on the evidence that he did this. So I mean that that that's of some concern, but the fact, I, I think the prevailing opinion is that it's not, they're not going to, they're not going to go for a third trial. There needs to be ex exceptional circumstances for them to go for a third trial. But I mean, we, we've seen that the Dragons have released a statement. So far, we've seen nothing from the NRL. Do you think there's, there's any chance that they, they overturn this, this stand down policy uh, in the, the near future before the 28th of May, Matt? I, I don't think so, Donny. Um, they've, they've looked a, a bit foolish show, bringing it in to begin with. Um, so there's no point in them making themselves look even worse by pulling the plug on it uh, before the judicial process has, uh, has run its course. Okay, so... Uh, well, I don't believe they will. Out, they can't stop him. It's a restraint of trade. If this gets thrown out of court, <laughs> they can't stop. If well, it gets thrown out of court, then the NRL can find themselves on the wrong side of a lawsuit. Yeah, I know. So, Mick, suit out of Mick, the I, I, as I said, the prevailing opinion is that on the 20, 28th of May, we're going to find out the prosecution's not going to pursue a third trial. So that means all charges will be dismissed. You'd assume from there the NRL overturns his stand down and, and he's available for selection. Does he come straight back into this side? And what sort of impact will that have on the club if he does? Well, uh, yeah, but Luke, it's good that you, you brought the subject up. It's good that you, you haven't asked anybody for opinions about whether guilty or not guilty, because I'm sure if we brought it up, there'd be different views, but you're just sticking sort of to the, the straight point about what would happen. Um, I think. Um, if it is thrown out of court or they do come back and say, look, yeah, we can't get the decision, so he's free to play. Uh, as the boys said, the NRL could not possibly then step in and say, well, we're going to overrule this and he's, he's out of the game. Um, he's got to be allowed to play. And if he is allowed to play, I think Jack would probably, 
I think put him in reserve grade would be a waste of time. Me personally, I would like to see Jack come straight back into the uh, first grade team because we've missed him badly. He's been one of our best defenders for years, to be honest, and uh, in that middle. And uh, he barely misses a bloody tackle, that guy. He tackles everybody. He's always around the legs. He's an old style, Rod McGregor, round the legs, round the legs, you know. Um, <laughs> it was a Rod McGregor, did I get his name wrong? Did some uh, young? Was it Rob McGregor referring to? The bloke that tackled around the legs? Yeah, God, that used to play for us in the, I don't know, was it 70s or something? A blonde headed fella. Oh, God. Anyways, God. maybe some dragon fan could listen to me. And I, I think it was a guy yeah, called McGregor. God. Yeah, they, I think it's Rod McGregor. But anyway, any dragon fan can pick me up on that. But anyway, the point that I'm getting to is yeah, look, Jack's a big miss for us defensively. He's been training. Brett um, uh, what's that? Brett Rodwell? Was that him? Brett Rockwell? No, 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 no that, that that's a that's a great play, but that's not the guy. I'm on. <laughs> I'll, I'll look it up when I get off when I get off. Um, but yeah, I, I think uh, Jack should come back in because he had been training for a long period of time with the first grade boys for a long period of time. It was only recently that he got dropped to train with the with the lower guys. A lot of things that I hear on the great bond is one of the fittest blokes at training. He's doing more work than everybody else. He's still as fit as anything, and he's he's been inspiring other players. So. I think if Jack came back into the first grade side straight away, uh, you would see that defensive uh, in the middle, we would tighten that right up. And uh, me, Percy, I would like to see Jack uh, back in the team straight away if he was allowed to play. Yeah, so for me, I, I'd, I'd be very concerned about the impact it would have on the, the, the wider squad having a bloke that hasn't trained with them all year. So it's, it, you, you say that it's recent, but he has not been training with the first grade squad at all in 2021. It's been this entire season he's been down training okay. grades. So for me, if, if either in Josh McGuire until recently. Well, I mean, 28th of May, that that it gets thrown out, he's, he's available for selection and straight away he gets picked for the Thursday night game against the Brisbane Broncos at uh, at Cogra Jubilee Stadium. Uh I, I, I don't know how well the rest of the rest of the club is the rest of the team is going to respond to that. Uh, I mean, is that something you would, would like to see straight away, straight into that that big game, free to wear game on Thursday night, Benny? I'd love to see that personally, but um, the game's changed a lot in the last couple of years. Um, if he does make a return, it'll be off the bench, and I reckon he'll get 10, 15 minutes if he's lucky. Uh, the game is that quick now. Um, I guess the good thing is he's not injured. It's probably about the only one out of our roster that's not injured at the moment. So uh, it's... Uh, we might not have a choice but to play him, mate. <laughs> yeah, that's it. He might be the only one out there. So, um, no, I, I think he'll be super keen to get back into it uh, if he does. And I, I remember somebody on, on Facebook, it was one of the Dragons pages, but they said, um, you know, God help the first guy that runs at the Bellin after uh, you know, he gets back on the field. So he's going to have a, a real point to prove. Um you know, two years off of footy is a, is a long, it's more than two years um, now, but it's, it's, a, it's a long time out, uh, especially at, at, at first grade. So um, whether he's he should be, be eased back in. Hell. What was that? He's going to be hungry as hell. Oh, you take a player out of the game for two years and you leave him sitting on the sideline, not being able to do something they really want to do, he is going to come out fired up. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I think so happen. too, but... I think also on the flip side of that, um, if it is canned on the 28th, I think personally he'll take some time to process that. So I probably wouldn't want to throw him straight back into footy. Um, this has been such a big part of his life and, um, and his emotions will be running high come if they knock it on the head. So I think it's probably better for him to take a little bit of time just to get his head back in the game before he jumps straight back into it. Uh, that's, that's my opinion. Um, but, He'll definitely be keen to get back out there, but whether it's the best thing straight away, who knows? Yeah, pers personally, for me, I, I would love to see him come back through reserve grade, prove that he deserves a spot in the top grade team. Go out there, have absolute blinders in the lower grades, and then the, the squad can't have too many complaints if he's playing that well in reserve grade that he deserves a spot in the top grade. So that's the way I would prefer to see them, them do it. Um, I'm a little bit concerned about a bloke that's been out for a couple of years. Yeah, you know, he's going to be keen to get back in there. He, he's going to want to get in and rip and tear. 
but wanting to do it and actually being able to do it after such a long time out of the game, I think they're two different things. I, I think there's going to be a lot of people <laughs> hoping that Jack DeBellin comes back the same player he was when he left, and I don't think he will be. Uh, I'm just I'm I'm worried that the expectations that fans are going to have of him are going to be higher than he's capable of doing at this stage after such a long period out of the game. Um, anyway, that's a, that's enough for, about Jack DeBellin. Uh, we'll move on to the, the second half. And the, the story of the second half for me is, I mean, Matty, is there anything better than a debutante getting a try? And we got two of them in this game. Um, there is something better than one debutante uh, getting a try, and that's two debutantes getting a try. And um, if anyone's uh, <coughs> seen Donnie's uh, video, when uh, when Amone got his try, uh, Donny went absolutely off his nana. Um, but what a and I mean, did you see the look on his face when he when he knew he was in? He looked like a he looked like he'd won a million dollars. He just, he was so happy. And I'm sure all Dragons fans were absolutely over the moon for him. Uh, I know I certainly was. And I mean, Maddie Fenai, I mean, how how good is he going to be? He's going to be something special, I reckon. Yeah, no, I, I think Matty um, really benefited from playing outside Jack Bird. I think there was a couple of times where Max would have been in the clear if he had an actual centre standing inside him. But, uh, mm. yeah, I think Matty had a oh, he had a great time of it. What a, what a debut. Uh, again, I think a, a bloke that came, came on, um, he handled everything thrown at him. Uh, he looked like a looked like a seasoned pro. And then for, for Junior to come on for a little cameo there at the end and, uh, and, and get that try at the, uh, right towards the, the back latter stages of the match, and to say I was excited, I think, is an understatement. I was, I was just so happy for the, <laughs> the kid. I mean, Youngy, can you remember a player that went from FG ball, which is under 19s under now, but used to be under 18s, going from under 18s, skipping under 20s, under 21, skipping reserve grade, straight into first grade? I mean, I, I, can't, I can't remember a player that did that. Can you remember one? Anyone? Tim Brasher, wasn't it? Out of the seventeens, come straight out of school schoolboy football, played first grade. Good name, good name. But, <laughs> but yeah, it was quite a debut. <laughs> but he was really good. Yeah, no, it was. I, I mean, he, he didn't get a lot of time, but he, he certainly uh, looked pretty sharp in the in the time that he had. Uh, Benny, yeah. should uh, Corey Norman be worried? Uh, maybe he's on too much money to be worried. Even if he does get dropped, I'm sure he'd be pretty happy. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, like I said last week, it's so good to see these young guys coming through um, and, and getting these opportunities. And, and obviously, we're doing good stuff with our juniors at, at the Dragons. And, and Hook can obviously um, see what we're doing. And, and I think um, I think it might have even been you today, Donny, that was talking that we're sort of aiming for a 2023 20, sort of plan. And I think. Um, like I, I watch Formula One and it's very similar in that too. You know, like the teams will go through a, a five-year development stage to see results. And uh, it's like that a lot in footy too. You know, like you look at the Melbourne Storm and the Roosters, they all go through those cycles. And Penrith are in one of those cycles at the moment where they're seeing the results of four or five years ago. So I think uh, what we're building now is going to put us in pretty good stead for the next few years. And these young guys are going to be such a critical part of that. Um, I just hope, like I've stressed before, that we hang on to these guys and we don't lose them to either injury or, or to another club. So, you know, if, if, if the guys up top are smart, they'll hang on to these boys and, um, you know, we'll have a few more Benny Craze that are just, you know, bleed red and white. And that's what we need in the club. We've always been passionate about that, you know, and trying to, to get those one club guys. And, and that's what the fans want and that's what the club needs. So hopefully it happens. Yeah. Okay, so just after the, the, the Matt Fenai try, uh, there, there looked to be another Ben Hunt try assist for, for Jack Bird, uh, but the bun bunker took that one away and put a bulldog in the sin bin. Was this the moment that, that set the outcome of the match and should it have been a penalty try instead, Nick? <clears throat> oh, 
penalty try. I don't think he could have set penalty try because there were other players uh, around Jack. But um, you know, it looked like a try. It looked like a try to me. And I'm not saying that just as a drag of the penalty. I thought Jack um, it was a fair try. Um, but uh, yeah, the player, the player that got uh, Simbin, I don't even really know why he went to the Simbin for. Um, what, what did he actually do? I can't really recall it. I just well, remember he, him going he, off the he, field. And I was sort of saying to people what I happened. Not, not him off the ball. He he yeah. held Jack Bird the, back and prevented him from getting to the ball. Right. Yeah, so he still got the right. Ball. Well, well, yeah. Well, where, where I was in the when I was where I was in the stands, I was literally at the other end of the ground. Uh, and it was a bit too far away also from the screen being 60 years of age. I couldn't sort of see what was going on. So it was a little bit um, too hard to make out what was happening, whether in front of the screen or 95 metres at the other end of the field. Um, but when I saw it back on the replay, I thought, well, I actually thought Jack scored it. Um, and, and what was the reason? Why was it not, not a try? Oh, he dropped it. What was it? <laughs> yeah. he, he, he dropped it. Right, yeah, okay. He, he, didn't right. Get, he didn't get down pressure. He did get it. All right. Yeah, so you I think it's got better eyesight than I have. <laughs> I think it was a fair no <laughs> try, but uh, it was. Is that you, Donnie? Is that you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bit of humour. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, it had a, had a pretty big impact on the game, though. So after the sin bin, we got, we got three tries in that 10 minutes. Um, that, that he was off the field. So it uh, was, a, was a big, big moment in the match. Um, yeah, w- what we might do now is we'll, we'll take a, a quick break uh, and we'll come back with the, the second part uh, of uh, the Mad Dragons vodcast in, in just a minute. Well, g'day and welcome back to the Mad Dragons vodcast part two uh, of a, a great little episode has been so far and a lot of fun. Uh, Grab myself an extra beverage and we'll we'll get stuck into it. So we just had had the sin bin, three tries in ten minutes, put the result beyond doubt. Um, Matt, were you a little bit disappointed that we didn't go on with it, uh, leading twenty eight nil with fifteen minutes to go? We really could have gone on and put on a, a big score and done our for and against a, a, a big solid. But uh, uh, we were you a bit disappointed with that? Uh, not really, Donny. Um, I think um, even I mean, yeah, the Bulldogs are sort of the cellar dwellers, and we were, we should have beaten them. We did beat them. I mean, you still got to turn up and and do your jobs, which the boys did well. Um, look, they've they've played us into a bit of form. The doggies. Um, was really impressed with the second half. Uh, I think the scoreline reflected the. Uh, Certainly the second half, uh, first half, not so much. Um, I was a little bit disappointed about the the two tries that uh, the Bulldogs did score, although I'm going to put my uh, McGregor hat on here and uh, paraphrase something he said. Um, that, uh, they did score both their tries off, uh, you know, against the run of play. Um, but uh, no, the, the scoreline reflected how, how much better we, we were during that second half. Yeah, that wasn't quite McGregor esque. McGreg- McGregor thought kicks, uh, <laughs> tries from kicks don't count, and you know, if it's you know all all, all all sorts of things that don't count, but they're they're all worth four points at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, no, I, I agree that they were against the run of play, one from a one on one strip and another one from an intercept, where if the intercept wasn't taken, I think the Dragons score another one. So uh, yeah, I certainly agree with the assessment that they were against the general run of play and. Uh, but uh, you can't take them off the scoreboard. So, uh, yeah, we've got to kind of chop that on the chin. These days um, they can. <laughs> yeah, we, you, you're right. <clears throat> you're right, Benny. You, they can take it off the scoreboard these days. But, Mick, um, I, I'm sure everybody that follows you would have seen a fantastic photo uh, that you got at the end of the game with uh, Max and, and Matt Fienai's uh, dad and his traitorous brother wearing a Bulldogs jersey. Uh, and you, you said you were keeping a pretty uh, pretty close eye on on Max, particularly during that second half. Yeah, yeah, mate. Uh, it was not nice to um, meet their dad. A very nice, very lovely man. And, and the other son, um, I didn't actually get his name, but they were very kind to of, uh, give me uh, some time for a bit of a chat after the game, and and a photo. And uh, you know, obviously very proud of their boys. And uh, you know, Max, especially in the second half, uh, was mainly on my um, sort of the field. He wasn't sort of too far from me, so I could get a good view of uh, what he was doing 
and they were constantly bombing him. Uh, they pretty much didn't kick to anybody else. They just kept kicking the max the whole line, and he didn't drop a ball. And there's a couple of times he got a, he got hammered a few times, and he didn't drop it. And I thought, yeah, okay, this, this guy's um, got a good style about him. And I think, you know, maybe maybe um, you could put, as I mentioned it before, Ravalara in the second row and put uh, Max on the wing because oh, I think he's he's going to be a very good player. Matt, I sort of didn't sort of see uh, too much in the first half, but uh, yeah, I think with Max, I think we've got a pretty good winger in our hands. If he, if he, uh, we keep him and he develops into a Dragons player and yeah. level over to the second row. Yeah, and I, I, I thought both both the Fenai boys were, were outstanding. Um, unfortunate for, for Max, it looks like he's got a, a syndesmosis injury. Um, it's, a, it's a big blow. He's only just come Matt, back. Matt, wasn't so it? He, sorry? Wasn't it Matt that got injured? Or yeah, Max? Matt. Matt. I thought it was uh, Matt. Max. Yeah, yeah, Matt. Max it was Max. Oh, Matt was it? Matt and Max, so it sounds, probably sounds <laughs> <laughs> the same. But, uh, yeah, so Matt with a syndesmosis injury, which is a, a big shame because he's only just come back from injury. We don't had, only had one reserve grade back from a knee injury. Uh, and you might have seen his, his knee was strapped during the game, but it was the other leg uh, that got, got caught under and uh, a little bit awkward. So they, they've got some further scans coming up for him. So uh, hopefully it's not too bad and we can see him back in, uh, you know, three to four weeks' time. Uh, but, yeah, it was a, a great debut from him. And uh, I think we'll see plenty more of Max as well. Um, as I said, if we if he can get a, an actual centre inside him, he might might get a bit more quality ball out there as well. So um, rather than, than I, I suppose, <clears throat> um, most weeks I sort of highlight a few different individuals and get each year to, to talk about them. But rather than doing that, uh, me sort of picking who I think was good, uh, I might throw it over to you guys and... Um, just let you guys give you your three, two, ones, and and you can talk about what it was about that player's game that that, that you love. So I'll start with you, Youngy. Just your your three points. Oh, for me, I I thought Jack Bird had a really good game, so I'd be giving the three points to him. Um, probably two to Ben Hunt. Not overly sure um, on the final point. Maybe Paul Vaughan for the final point. But yeah, um, for me, Jack Bird had a really, really good game. Yep, fantastic. Um, Benny, your three, two, one, and, and a, a bit of a reason as to why. Um, my three is the same as uh, Youngie's mate, Bertie. Yeah, blinder. Um, he's so strong. He's just, yeah, you know, like even, even that try just to get there. Um, brilliant effort. You know, obviously he didn't get it, but they uh, could have could have gone the other way, but. Um, like I've said it before, he's just playing with so much confidence. He really looks like he's at home with us, which is, is awesome to see. And he's getting better and better every week. Um, you know what I mean? He's, I, I just hope that obviously he stays away from the injuries. And um, yeah, he's just going to keep keep being a solid, super solid player for us. Um, I actually wouldn't mind seeing him move into lock even, um, depending obviously you know what happens with people coming back. And that was the thing about JDB. If he does come back, where's he going to slot into? Whose spots he going to take? So uh, we've got options in regard to that, uh, which is good. My two would have been Blocker. Um, he's just aggro. Like, he, he, he ran out there again today, like he's, he's, he's done before against Car and a few other matches. He just, he's got a point to prove. I don't know who's pissed him off or who said something about him or to him, but he's going out there and he's just got that mongrel in him, which is good. Um, and my one would probably be uh, be Dufty. I, I was pretty critical of him last week, um, as you all know. But uh, I think this week he was – he must have listened to what I said because everything I said last week he did this week. He, he was there when he needed to be. He was sniffing around for the ball. He was trying to create opportunities. Um, you know, and, and I think uh, obviously, you know, Benny, Benny Hunt and that we were sort of working off him a bit more, which was good to see. So, yeah, my three, two, ones. But, um, yeah. Fantastic. No, I, 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 yeah, I think you've got some good choices there. Uh, Matty, uh, your three, two, ones. Uh, so not, not much uh, deviation from uh, what we've already had. Um, I had uh, Vaughan as uh, my three-pointer. Um, I thought he was, he was very, very strong. Uh, didn't do too much uh, wrong. A lot more aggression than uh, what we've, uh, what we saw certainly um in the uh, Tigers game, um, I've given I've given Birdie too. Um, he's very very strong, 
Um, very unlucky, I think, uh, not to quite get down with pressure on that on that ball. It was definitely a no try, but only by the slimmest of margins. And the one pointer I'll give to Dufty, um, he went looking for the ball uh, again a lot more than uh, what we have uh, seen the last week or two. Um, I want to see him do it more. I want to see him in Hunt's pocket every time Hunt runs to the line. Yeah, no, I mean... He could be absolutely deadly. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, for, for, for me, me personally, I don't have Dufty in my, my three, two, one, but uh, I, I totally agree. He had an outstanding game. What I loved about, about Dufty was that he kept getting the ball in different places. It wasn't, you know all in the, the same spot, running the same set plays that the, the opposition was able to work out. He was, was was getting it on the left. He was getting it on the right. He was, you know, got it a couple of times, sort of cutting in behind the ruck, uh, looking to target a, a lazy A defender. It, there were so many different ways. He, you know, a couple of those sort of outside, inside plays as well. Uh, and I think that's the key to Matt Dufty being dangerous is not doing the same thing throughout the entirety of the game. It's being able to bob up and just appear anywhere on the field at any given moment in time. And I, I think that, uh, that that's got to be pretty intimidating for any opposition if he, if he does start to develop that part of his attacking game. And, and I think for Dufty, he's got to be good at what he's good at. And attack is what he's bloody good at. So uh, Mick, your three, two ones. Um, yeah, I really don't like these questions because um, you've really got to sort of split players and I'm not really personally like a big big fan of that myself. But uh, my three is actually a bit different sort of to the rest of the boys. Uh, the only one that I've got the same as those boys is Bird. Um, but I'll, I'll stick with my number three first, uh, which would be Hunt. Uh, not that he really sort of stood out or was exceptional. I just think the captain... I think the captain role uh, is sort of sitting pretty uh, pretty well with him. I think he's going to sort of grow into it. He was running the ball, and when Ben Hunt runs the ball, the Dragons are a very very dangerous looking team. When he runs the ball, he's got that nice little sort of show, and he can pop the short one, he can throw the long one, and it just puts the defenses in turn mind. I just thought he led the Dragons around really well. My uh, two points would be uh, Bird, uh, just for everything the boys said, you know. Uh, He's had a lot of injuries that have uh, put him out of the game for a while and, um, and he's come back and uh, he's, a lot of people said he'll never play the game again. He should give it away, all that sort of stuff. And he's fought through a lot of mental mental stuff to get back out on the field and prove people wrong that said, no, he's gone, he can't play, he's finished. And uh, to come back for the Dragons and play the way he's playing, he's such a strong, solid, solid player. Um, and my one, you'll probably laugh at this one, <laughs> no, one no one mentioned him. My one would be Josh Maguire. Uh, I really, really like Maguire. Uh, he's you know, getting the ball, run, the, the way he's running it, running into the line. His defensive work is pretty strong. But the the one that really stood out for me, the one I think it was the second Bulldogs try. I can't remember who scored it, uh, but one of the guys made a break, and he just took off down the field. Maguire chased this bloke for like you know, maybe maybe twenty, 20 meters or so. Do we, it was like old James Graham. There was no way in the world Josh McGuire was going to even get within, you know, 15 metres of the bloke. He was a mile away from the guy. But he chased that bloke as far as he could tell he nearly had a bloody heart attack. And it was right in front of me and I could see it and I thought, that's that's what the Dragons needed, those James Graham types bloke. And when I saw that chase by Josh McGuire, I just thought, yeah, okay, mate, you're, he's wearing the jersey He's wearing that red V jersey with a lot of pride, I believe. He was, and as we said before, he was the one guy I really didn't like. I didn't want him coming to the Dragons. I made very clear on a lot of my own on my own pub TV sort of stuff about it. I didn't think it was right for the club, but he's actually really swung me right up, right the other way around. Um, so for me, he's got to get a point just purely because I was so against this guy. I despise the guy, to be totally frank with everybody. So if Josh McCoy happens to see this, which he probably won't, but if he does, I'll say, mate, if uh, really pleased that you read the Dragons, mate, you're, um, you're playing a really, really good solid footy. And I think it's uh, really good that you're at the club. Um, and I think guys like Blocker, uh, like, was it Matt that said uh, Blocker? Or Benny, someone said Blocker. Yeah, Benny yeah. said Blocker. Same, same, same thing. He's, uh, he's developing into a really, really great 
player. And as you said, someone's pissed him off um, because he certainly looks like he's running with a lot of intent. And I think a guy like Josh, being older and having that experience, um, will drag sort of blocker into his sort of um, aggression, but hopefully without going over going over the top. But uh, yeah, I was really impressed with Maguire. He's just totally turned my head round from hating him to almost loving him. <laughs> That's pretty hard to do. Uh, 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 yeah. Moose Maguire gets his first win of 2021 as well. Yeah. So, uh, well, and, and, and there you go. Yeah, I know. Yeah, well, that could have been subconsciously in my head as well because everyone's from Dragon Pages. He's been saying, oh, he's lost every game the last few games for the Cowboys and he came to us and he's lost all the Dragons games. So, yeah. Um, but I what agree with you. It was, it was you last week saying saying he was a he was a. Hey, don't don't last think that. Of the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I, was, I I object. <laughs> I've got to talk to my lawyer. <laughs> yeah. But no, I, but, yeah, so, I so, didn't. I didn't notice that the, the chase that you're talking about. I didn't notice it live, but I was uh, just in preparation for this. Went back yeah. had another look at it was it was Leo mini, and and I it, saw the chase. So it was after the the Nick Meany intercept, and. He chased him all the way to the trial line, was never going to get him. Uh, there wasn't too many people, no, no. Dragons at all that were chasing, but Maguire was one of them that was still sprinting and you could, you could yeah. see his uh, full noise trying to, get to, trying to get to him, trying to do everything he can yeah. to keep him out wide at least. And this was at a moment in the game where he wasn't going to catch him. It wasn't going to impact the result, but he was still given 110%. So, no, good, good, uh, good recognition of that, Mick, I think. Yeah, and that and, and, and that's why, as I said, not just, just completely turning my, my head around from how I sort of viewed it before. And the interesting thing is, and you boys would probably notice it as well, since he joined us, he hasn't done any of that niggling shit he did with, with the Broncos or the Cowboys. He <laughs> well, hasn't sent him to any of that. Uh, uh, right, refresh my memory. So right towards the end of the game, he put oh, late hit on the, oh. the half and got put on report. So I don't know if anything came of that. Did yeah. anybody see anything? No, they right. Both the boys got put on report, uh, got fines, and they're uh, they're good to go. Yeah, right. Yeah, I must admit I can't really sort of recall recall that tackle. Maybe I deliberately want to forget it. <laughs> well, it's slightly late. Yeah, but I mean, again, it shows what a competitor that he is. That I, I don't know that he could have pulled out of it. It was one of those where he was get going up to put pressure on Ooh. the half and he passed the ball and then he whacked him. Um, it's one of those that they're trying to stamp out of the game, trying to protect halves. Yeah. And I think a lot of it's got to do with the fact that most of our commentators seem to be ex-halves so they all want to protect the uh, yeah. protect those blokes when they go to the line because they, they know what it feels like to get whacked like that. But uh, for me, it's part of the game and you get on with it and stop sucking. You want to be a half, you're going to get knocked on your ass occasionally. But... Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's not the, the way the way the game's going. But for me, uh, my three, I, again, I'll echo the, the thoughts of uh, most of the panel and say Jack Bird. Um, I am astounded that he didn't get a single vote in the Dally M. Well, I'm not, a, not astounded. The Dally M's a bit of a joke um, <laughs> consistently. Um, but yeah, for me, Bird, constant threat. Uh, he moved from one side of the field to the other when we had a had a HIA for, for Fulmoano uh, to accommodate uh, Burns coming on and, and playing out of position um, and didn't miss a beat. He, he was just as dangerous on, on both sides of the field. Um, just a yeah. real handful. And you don't want to run anywhere near him. He is an absolute animal. Um, two for Ben Hunt. Um, most of you guys are anti Corey Norman. My biggest beef has probably been with Ben Hunt. I'm not a huge fan of, of, of Benny, um, but I thought he had a, he had a really <laughs> solid game, guided the team around the park. He had two try assists. Uh, probably should have had three if it wasn't for Will Hopwadi obstructing uh, obstructing Bird on that try. Um, yeah, I thought he was a, again a bloke that created a lot of opportunities and and his pass to put. Uh, Matt Finoy in for, for his his try on debut was uh, was a real thing of beauty. So uh, I think uh, he was outstanding for us. And uh, yeah, the one vote for me goes to to Blocker. Um, again, it was a probably a coin toss between the front rowers. I mean, Paul Vaughan ran for 199 metres in this game. Uh, I thought he he was outstanding as well. But 
blocker, it, it's just his aggression with and without the ball. He, he gets up and he's just, he hits blokes and he hurts them. And, and that's not something that he was doing last year. It was a big criticism of him, you know, coming into, into this season that if Blake Laurie is, uh, is out in our best two front rowers, then we're, we're in trouble was the, the general consensus across the, uh, the Dragons forums. But uh, I think he's really stepped up and he's proved a lot of doubters wrong. Um, yeah, he's, he's developing into a fantastic front rower. And uh, I think I even said that I don't think he'll ever play ref footy. I, I think I might uh, eat those words if he keeps going the way that he's going because uh, he's, been, he's been outstanding. So uh, that's my three, two ones. Um, we'll move now into next week. Put your hand up. Does anybody give us a chance against the Melbourne Storm? Hey, Matty, you go, mate. <laughs> okay. Um, when I say a chance, I say a very, very slim chance. Um, look, any team can beat any team on their day, um, but we are going to have to be 100% better than we were against the dogs to match it with the storm that's just that's just a fact of life they were very very well coached very well drilled side uh even though cameron smith's not that anymore to uh, influence the referees um but um no look if we if we turn up with the same sort of intent that we did against the bulldogs uh i think we can we can at least get close to them um if not cause what would be one hell of an upset all right, Mick, we, we sort of heard you, you've already written us off, uh, but you did that. At, you didn't think we'll beat the Bulldogs either. So uh, I'll go to somebody else who doesn't think we're going to beat the Storm. Youngie, you, you, you were very reluctant yeah. to stand up. <laughs> Mate, only because um, of some of the players we're missing and the Storm are pretty clinical. I mean, I live down here in Melbourne, so I get to see them every week. Geez, they're playing good footy. That that'd be the only re the only reason I, I can't see them see us beating them. That they're just in such good form at the moment and going to be very very hard to beat. But I'll watch with interest either yes, way, man. and uh, I think it's crossed. I'll, I'll 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 give give an argument both ways. But for for me, I, I actually think that this is the type of game that we get up for. This is the type of game where we, we put our focus on this team. This is a huge game for us. We come out and, like, the only other team we've played in the top four so far is Parramatta, and I think Parramatta. everybody agrees that was the game where we got up for that experience. I'm, I'm, I'm probably more worried about the easy games that are coming after the Melbourne Storm because I think we're going to put a lot of focus into this one. We're going to get right up on the day, give them as good as they can, they can take, and I think we're every chance of causing an upset. But if we do, then I think that there's every chance that we probably lose the couple after that because we'll put everything into this performance. Um, so that's that's the positive side of things. The, the negative side and the thing that concerns me, I'm going to, to Magic Round, so I'm actually going to be at the game. Um, and part of sort of part of that is I, I gave the, the club a call to see if the, the Dragons were doing any sort of... Uh, you know, open training sessions or any chance to, to sort of meet the players, get some gear signed, all that sort of stuff. And uh, they said, no, nope, the, the club is just flying in, flying out. They're going to touch down, play the game and go straight home. And uh, that always concerns me in terms of preparation for a game being key. If you're travelling in, touching down, going straight to the game and then leaving again, uh, I don't know that that's the best preparation at all. So uh, that... That worries me a little bit because, uh, yeah, it's a game that I think we really need to be 100% focused for to be any chance. Um, all right. Um, I'll give uh, over, the, over now to the, the last word. So either the last word for the, the Bulldogs game or the, the last word in uh, the, the Melbourne Storm game coming up. And we'll start with uh, you, Benny. Yeah, obviously, I think we covered off um, the Bulldogs game pretty well. Like I said, for me, first half was pretty lacklustre. Second half, we came home and actually played a bit of footy, which is good to see. I think um, against the Storm, it could go, like you said, it could go two ways. We're, we're either going to go out there and we're going to play footy and we're going to give them a real good shake. Otherwise, uh, 
the other option is we, we go out there and, and get, get belted and uh, maybe that attitude from the club that you spoke about might be just that. Maybe they're just going to tick it off the list, get it over and done with and focus on uh, the rest of the season. Obviously, we're, we're still playing with a depleted squad. Um, a lot of injuries, obviously. And I think we really missed Lomax um, last week. Obviously, Corey Norman's kick is nowhere near Lomax's and, and that extra four, six points in a game against a, a squad like Melbourne is, is crucial. So, um, but in Taylor too, if we go out and play footy and give them a bit of stick, who knows? Anyone can win on any day. It's, that's the beauty about the game of football. So, um, yeah, looking forward to it either way. Right, I mean, uh, I've taken a couple of cheap shots at you during the uh, <laughs> the course of the night. Uh, I'll give you the, the the final word, though, mate. Uh, any final uh, thoughts? Yeah, uh, well, look, thanks for mentioning that I did think we were going to get beaten by the Bulldogs. I appreciate that. Uh, but just to tell your fans that I did also say, if everybody remembers that if our forwards fight, we win. So just remember that I did. I did actually say if the forwards fight, we win, and our forwards did fight, and we did win. Um, anyway, right, so back to um, just quickly the Bulldogs Dragon game. Well, just, just to reiterate what I said, it was a shame that we weren't making the, the, the breaks that I was expecting the Dragons to be making, mainly through Duffy. As I said, maybe I was putting too much pressure on thinking in my head he should be aware of the 75, 80 metre breaks that I'm expecting that he should be doing. And um, that was a little bit of a concern for me that he wasn't doing that because I sort of expect him to do that. Could be a very unfair expectation of him, but that's kind of what I expect. Um, in the Melbourne Storm game, well, as you said, um, at the very beginning, of, I did think we were probably going to get absolutely bloody annihilated. However, we get I think we get Ravalava. We get Ravalava back this um, weekend, don't we? Yes, yeah, we do. so Ravalawa yeah. coming right. So, so at least Ravalawa coming back is going to be at least a, a bit of defensive uh, thing for us. And like you said, Donnie, as well, I agree. The sometimes the bigger game the Dragons have to play, the better that we actually live as a team. Sometimes when we play the lower teams where we're supposed to win, as we've seen, we get beaten. Uh, so Melbourne Storm might be laugh, completely laughing that they're going to play us, and that could actually play into our hands that they actually disrespect us enough that before they know it, we, we might be in front, you know, 12 mil before they get going. And if we can get in front 12 mil, I, I think not even so much that we win the game, but I think if we can get in front early, then we can kind of be in the game. And if we can be within 18 points of them, uh, or even if we lose that, if we lost by 18 points, I think against the Storm, we'd have to say that's a pretty good uh, game. If we lose by 18 points, if Melbourne play the way they play their best and we play our worst, well, you know, I don't know, it could be could be 40 nil at half time. And that's that's what sort of worries me. It just depends on what Melbourne Storm team turns up and what Dragons team turns up. And if we're both firing to our best, well, I think we'll probably get done by, you know. Yeah, you know, we could be in it by 12 points if if we completely fire at our best. Yeah, so a big, big game coming up, a big test for us, that's for sure. Uh, Youngie, your your last thoughts? Yeah, I'm a little bit concerned, to be honest, but um, I'll still wear the red bean with pride and um, and hope for the best, I think. Fantastic, mate. Uh, Matty, last but not least. Look, uh, look, the second half against the Bulldogs was... Uh, very, very good. Um, if we're going to match it with Melbourne, we need to basically duplicate that plus um, for the entire 80 minutes. If we can do that, we're a very, very good chance of getting the, getting the two points. Um, on the other hand, if we play like we did against the Tigers, uh, we could be looking at a cricket score. Yeah, no, I, I don't think you're wrong there at all. And uh, I think you make a, a lot of good points. I think if we ever you know, a 10 minute lapse against Melbourne and the game will be over. Um, that's, that's how good they get, they get, they are and uh, how quickly they can put on points. And I think it was, it was scary what they did to South Sydney. Um, South are a, a pretty good team. I know they were missing Adam Reynolds, but uh, 50 nil against a, a team that's, you know, they're going to finish in the top four South and they got, they got done 50 nil by Melbourne. So that's, uh, that's Melbourne at their best. Uh, hopefully they, uh, you know, they got up for that game and they'll have a, a bit of a bit of a flat period this this coming weekend. But uh, yeah, good to, good to get the two points against the Bulldogs. Um, at the end of the day, like I said at the the top of the show, it's a game. 
that we we had to win. We, there was never any thought that I had that we were any chance of losing that game. So to go out, get the job done, take the two points. We we didn't win win by by a point or two points or in the last minute. We won by twenty points. So it was a it's a good win. We'll take it. Uh, bigger fish to fry uh, this coming weekend. So uh, yeah, hopefully we can can get together on Magic Round. Go the Dragons. <laughs>